Hey everyone, it's Lucy from KeepBeautyHobby.com. It is getting warmer outside. I just filled my garden beds with more soil. So let's talk about sunscreens. To me, it is always sunscreen season. I use them every single day and try to remember to reapply. But I know some people focus more on sunscreens when it gets warmer and sunnier. Today I'm going to show you a ton of sunscreens. All of these I either open or are empty now, so I can definitely talk about them. And I even have more than this unopened, still waiting its turn. So if you like sunscreen content, definitely subscribe to my blog, keepbeautyhobbit.com, and follow me on Instagram at keepbeautyhobbit, because I will post all of that there. These are in no particular order. I grabbed a huge bag of them, and let's just go through them. The first one is a Japanese sunscreen called Anessa. It is absolutely amazing. Definitely a high price point. Chemical filters lovely finish, no white cast. This has a somewhat strong floral scent, but I don't mind it. And that scent does tend to linger, but again, I don't mind it. Probably one of my favorite sunscreens I've used all year. I just started using it recently, but already it is a favorite and I keep reaching for it. Oh, and by the way, before we get too uh, deep into this, I'll be giving very brief information on each one. And if you want more detailed reviews, I will link all of those in the description box. We're just going to be here forever if I talk about each sunscreen for as long as I'd like to talk about it. This one is absolutely awful. Uh, this is called Sioris My Shining uh, Simply Clean Sunscreen. It is awful. Horrible white cast, greasy, just gross. I honestly could not get myself to finish it. i just been keeping it to put in a sunscreen video, but it's going to get tossed because I literally couldn't even use it up on the tops of my feet before this thing expired. Next is Aipo Sun Daily Sun Cream SPF 50 moisture base a uh, very nice formula especially if you're on the drier side goes on clear on me i think it's either chemical or combination filters i now can't remember but i'll put that in the description box um can be a little bit dewy a little too shiny for my liking but a little dusting of translucent powder definitely fixes that right up so if you have uh, drier skin or if you like a more dewy finish this might be a really good choice for you. This one's a crowd favorite lately. It is Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. Definitely clear um, on most people that I talk to. I haven't actually seen anybody who would say anything about a white cast. Um, uses chemical filters, dewy finish. Again, not a big deal for me because powder goes onto it, but it's not my ideal finish, not my holy grail, but still a very nice sunscreen, not sticky, not greasy. Has a bit of a scent, but I barely notice it, to be honest. Another Japanese sunscreen. This is the oh-so-popular Can Make Mermaid sunscreen. This is the 01 Clear. They also make a 02 White. White one is absolutely horrible. Makes me look like a billiard ball. The yellow one is what my husband says. It's shiny, greasy, just gross. This one's not bad. A lot of people love it because it goes on clear on pretty much all skin shades, but it's too dewy for my liking. Um, I know a lot of people just really adore it, but it's not my favorite, and for me the tube was a little bit too small for the price. Then I have these two Neogen sunscreens, their original formula. Very good, especially if you have dry skin. This is pretty much the only thing my husband uses for his skincare. I mean, he washes his face and then he uses this in the mornings. Um, it is nice. It's not greasy. It is um, definitely moisturizing. And in the winter, it's really nice for me. I use it as my more nourishing sunscreen option. Then there's this new airy version that they released. I'm not sure. It keeps getting really whited out on my camera. Maybe you can see it better this way. This is definitely lighter. I don't see a white cast on me. I keep reaching for this. While this is not bad by any means, I really prefer this airy version just because it's lighter and I have combination skin. I ran out of battery, so sorry if the camera angle changed a little bit. This next one is Skin Food Tomato Tone Up Sun Cream. Looks like this. I absolutely hated it. It leaves a white cast on me like no other. Has a very strong smell. I actually didn't mind that too much. It doesn't smell like tomatoes. It smells like flowers but it definitely whites me out and I'm afraid to even imagine what it does to somebody with a darker skin tone. Then I have these two Revectin sunscreens. This one with a green label, Revectin Deep Moisture UV Protector. Definitely very moisturizing, maybe a little bit too moisturizing for my skin actually. Now that it started to get warmer, I've just used it up on my neck and ears because it was too much for my face. Both of these are 100% mineral if that's important to you. And this does not leave a white cast as far as I can tell, at least on me. It seems completely clear. This one is my preferred formula from Revectin. It is the Aqua Soothing UV Protector with the Aqua label. 
This one might potentially leave a white cast on deeper skin tones. Tones it does not on me. It has a more matte finish and I definitely prefer this one. I have an unopened one of these in my stash and I am not giving it to anybody. A lot of the times I will give um, duplicate products to my friends and stuff because I only have one face but I am not doing that with this one. I just really like it. This is basically iconic by now. The Cosarex Aloe Soothing Sun Cream SPF 50. If I remember right, it uses combination filters. Also pretty moisturizing, has a strong-ish scent. I didn't mind, a lot of people complain about it. Um, this would be a winter sunscreen for me. It is just a little bit too rich for me in the summer. I don't see a white cast on me and I think most people have that experience as well. However, I know that the scent is a big sticking point for a lot of people. Here's Axis Y Complete No Stress Physical Sunscreen. And I kind of have mixed feelings about this. So the original formula of theirs was in my 2020 skincare favorites video, maybe. It just blew my mind. It was so wonderful. And then when the whole sunscreen thing happened with Purito and a lot of other brands, brands started to pull their sunscreens and reformulate. And right around that time, Axis Y sunscreen went completely out of stock. I don't have any insider information as to why maybe it didn't test at the stated SPF. I'm not really sure. Maybe they just wanted to retest it. I don't know. But then they released this new formula and it's still good, but it is not as good. The original either didn't have a scent or had a very mild scent. This one definitely has a scent to it that lingers and I don't love that scent. It's still not a bad sunscreen at all and it may have even been like my favorite or slash holy grail if I had tried this one by itself without having that prior version that didn't have the scent. So that's my only gripe with it. Um, otherwise, definitely not a bad formula and I will be using it this summer. Next I have Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Natural Sun Cream. This is an all mineral version of their sunscreen. It is very good. It is more moisturizing than the watery gel that I showed you, but it also has a more natural finish, more on the little matte uh, finish. It's not totally matte though. It's still a little bit dewy, but it's not as dewy as the watery sun gel. And in general, I really like it. I wish I had it in the fall slash winter because it has that moisturizer vibe. I mean, most of these are moisturizers, but some are lighter than others. This one legit feels like a great moisturizer for fall slash winter, but still, I am using this right now. I don't have a review yet, but so far, not definitely not bad and definitely better than any Western formula that I've ever tried. This one is one of my holy grails. It's the Skin 1004 sunscreen. A lot of folks with deeper tones are complaining about a white cast or that it looks gray on them. On me, it doesn't look any which way. It just looks like a natural finish. It's slightly matte, just like I like. My only gripe with this is the size of the bottle. It is definitely on a smaller side. It is 50 milliliters of 1.69 fluid ounces. I'm not sure how hard it's going to be to get uh, the sunscreen out once I'm toward the bottom. If I'm going to have to cut the tube or store it upside down, I'm really not sure. It is good for travel though, and it, it's it's a nice, nice, nice formula. I really love it. And when I wear it, I don't put powder on top of it. I don't put anything on top of it. It just looks good and it's my preferred finish. And I have this Cynic Enjoy Super Mild Sun Essence SPF 50 Plus, PA++++, lovely sunscreen, completely clear, uh, has this watery feel to it, but not greasy and not sticky and not oily. I happily used it up uh, fairly quickly after getting it because I just kept reaching for it. Very nice formula, definitely would get it again. Nothing bad to say here. Here's a 2 UV double cut. Interesting sunscreen uh, because it's waterproof, uh, but it doesn't feel waterproof as in it's not sticky, it's not heavy. Very nice, uh, completely clear on me and definitely has more of a dewy finish. If I use it by itself without powder, I do end up looking a little bit shiny, not in the way that I enjoy, but if you like a dewy finish, this feels to me similar to the Can Make one that people really love, but it's, um, I think, a bigger tube and probably a little bit cheaper as well. Honestly, a lot of these watery gel things all kind of feel similar to each other. And I know that a lot of the times brands will contract with a manufacturer and basically, alter a couple ingredients and put their own label on it where one manufacturer, one production facility is making lots of formulas for different brands. And I definitely 
kind of can see that that a lot of these are very similar so it's just a matter of your personal preference for maybe things like scent and packaging and also price last but not least i have some sun sticks to show you some of them are great and some of them not so much this one's one of my favorites it's make prem it is all mineral if that's important to you um, I'm not advocating you use any of this on children, but I put it on my children. You can definitely consult a pediatrician if you're worried, but my kids, they're three and eight, tend to fight sticks a lot less than they fight creams. Now, if we're going to be outside for a very long time and maybe we're at a splash pad or on the beach or something like that, I will fight with them and I will put cream on them. But if we're going for a walk or before my kid, my oldest, goes to school and they have recess outside, I am okay to compromise and just have her put this on. It does keep her from burning. I don't think it's as good of a protection as putting a more traditional cream on, but I do think it's much, much, much better than nothing. And I use this on myself as well to reapply before my afternoon walks. I do that with all sun sticks, actually. That's mostly how I use them. I do a nice, good base layer in the mornings, and then for reapplication, I use sticks. I can also sometimes put them in my part if I plan on washing my hair that night. If not, I'll just use a hat. So these are definitely nice and convenient, and I even went like hiking and for very long walks with these and have not burned, and that's kind of an accomplishment for me because I burn very quickly and very easily. Another lovely, lovely sun stick. This is Isn't Tree. It has a unique shape here, like a teardrop, which makes it really nice to apply around uh, the harder to reach areas, like the nose. I don't know if you can see that, but it has this more narrow little angle right there. So if you're applying like around the nose, uh, you get a little more precision there. Uh, this one has either all chemical or combination filters. I think this is all chemical. It should be clear on all skin types, all skin colors because of that. I don't see any hint of a white cast at all. This definitely leaves a white cast on my husband. It does not on me or my kids, but my husband has darker skin tone, which is not a big accomplishment compared to me. Pretty much everybody is darker. I'm pretty sure a white sheet of paper is darker. But anyway, on him I can definitely see a white cast. With this, I don't. And this is Rire, Rire, Rire? I don't know. Tell me if you know how to pronounce it. Sunstick, I don't like this one. It smells really nice, but it's hard. It is hard to spread. You have to like pull quite a bit on the skin to get this on because it's just too hard of a formula. It kind of feels like chapstick where they put too much wax and not enough emollient or nourishing ingredients in. I kind of haven't been reaching for it. I do think I need to use it up though before it goes bad. And because it's I got some on my hand here. It's not sticky or anything, so I think that might be a back of the hand sort of product. Most of the time I wear UV gloves while driving, while walking, but sometimes it's just not possible. So this might be my hand sunscreen until it's out. But I definitely can't imagine putting it like around my eyes, which I do with all sun sticks. I will reapply them around the eyes as well. And I think this would just tug my little eyelids out of existence. I just not a good formula. Last but not least, I think the most expensive sunstick that I own and also the one that I really don't like is Ohui Day Shield Sunstick. I actually showed it in one of my somewhat recent fails and faves videos. It looks like this. It's kind of interesting because it's very heavy and it's big and this um, lid on it, the outside feels like it's metal but the inside is plastic, which is probably what makes it so heavy. Um, it looks really cool. It's this see-through amber color and it smells like expensive perfume, but like I told you all in my fails and faves videos, this leaves this weird balmy feeling on my skin that does not go away. So if I apply this and then touch my face half an hour later or an hour later, I still feel that balm. It's almost like spreading a thin layer of Vaseline on my face and it kind of sweats. It's weird. So I got it from Jolzy. It's definitely not fake, but as it sits, I don't know if you can see. Do you see the little droplets on it at the top, like on the surface of it? It's like it's sweating. What is happening? <laughs> it doesn't do that on the face, but it's just weird. It's like, what is that oil separating? I don't understand. Um, yeah, it's not expired. It's good until 2023. I just opened it a couple weeks ago. And while I really enjoy how it smells, 
it's just not for me. I can definitely see somebody with really dry skin maybe enjoying this. Maybe that's exactly what the doctor ordered for them if all the other sunscreens dry them out. For example, my favorite Anessa, the very first one I showed, a lot of people with dry skin don't like it. They say it's drying, but to me it's perfect. This one maybe, maybe. Sometimes these higher end brands are targeting more mature skin and maybe that's what's happening here and I'm just not the right target audience for it. I don't know, but I don't like it at all. That's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for joining me. If this is the kind of video you like, let me know because I have a ton of other sunscreens unopened still that I can show you maybe like in a couple of months or five months. I don't know, however long it takes me to open and try them all. But if you like these sort of sunscreen rapid reviews, let me know. I know it's very difficult to find a good sunscreen, but yet it's so, 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 so important. I know way too many people who have had different issues with their skin and had to have cancerous and precancerous things removed. So definitely take care of your skin, find a formula that works for you. And the best sunscreen is the one that you're going to use consistently and every day. You can find me on Instagram at kbeautyhobbit, on my blog kbeautyhobbit.com, in my private Facebook group Korean Beauty Fanatics. I'll see you in my next video. Until then, please remember to always listen to your skin. Thank you so much. Bye.